is the drug discovery and then it becomes the drug development so rather we can call it as a lead discovery lead optimization and followed by the drug development so we can divide it into three parts okay now <clears throat> the definition of drug you have been dealing with it since so uh, many years basically from your first year b farm you know what do you mean by a drug right so definitely it's a foreign particle which is getting introduced right so this is the syllabus which we will be dealing with which i already discussed yeah so we were at what is a drug so drug means it is any foreign particle which is intended to be used in either the diagnosis or cure or mitigation treatment or prevention of disease in man or other animals okay because you know even there are certain drugs that are for veterinary purpose that is just not for humans it is for the animals as well or in other terms you can also term a drug as any chemical or biological substance which could be synthetic or non synthetic that means either you will synthesize the entire molecule or you can actually obtain it from natural source so if you are obtaining from natural source it would be definitely called as a non synthetic chemical moiety okay now again you can also have certain drugs which are semi synthetic so either you can have natural uh, source you can have a semi synthetic drug or you can have a completely synthetic drug now semi synthetic means what you are able to isolate something from the natural source and then that something you are going to modify further so that you get a drug molecule so then that would be called as a semi synthetic drug and synthetic means totally you are relying on synthetic techniques or synthetic schemes for the synthesis of the drug is it clear to everyone yes ma'am okay what about others yes ma'am yes ma'am okay next now as far as the sources of drugs is concerned you can have certain drugs obtained from animal sources like for example you very well know insulin which is used in diabetes okay it can be isolated from pig or cow growth hormone it can be isolated from humans and it can be injected again by certain modifications then from plant sources you can get so many drugs the best example is of digitalis you get it from digitalis purpurea which is nothing but the fox glove plant morphine you get from papaver somniferum again plant you get ephedrine from ephedra plant you get pink alkaloids when crystal in industrying from plant so there are numerous examples that can be given as far as the plant source is concerned to derive the drugs as well as uh, initially even in certain inorganic compounds or inorganic elements like arsenic mercury and lithium they were also used as drugs okay and then finally a very important source that is a synthetic source wherein completely chemical uh, what you can say synthesis where it is involved so you have many drugs in this category one of the example is pentaol oleo that is propranolol as well as you can have certain drugs or antibiotics particularly which you can isolate from biological source for example penicillin cephalosporins or tetracycline macrolides amino glycosides so these are certain examples mainly the antibiotics are isolated from the streptomyces species okay as well as you can have certain biotechnologically synthetic uh, origin for the drugs for example human insulin okay so these are the different sources of drugs now as i told you when we are talking about drug discovery it is not actually the drugs that are discovered mainly what you are discovering is a lead compound or lead now this lead is nothing but as far as the definition is concerned 
it's a preliminary compound or you can call it as a prototype compound that definitely has got very much attractive features which are important for the desired biological activity or pharmacological activity now when i say biological activity or pharmacological activity biological means i'm talking in terms of say certain bacteria or viruses that are causing infections and pharmacological activity means the target would be the tar receptors enzymes which are present in the human body itself okay i suppose this difference is clear to everyone what do you mean by biological activity and pharmacological activity yes is it clear yes ma'am yeah so definitely it has got to its desired characteristic features but at the same time it also is associated with undesirable characteristics and this undesirable characteristics can include uh, high toxicity it could be binding of target what i mean by binding of target is for example i am designing the molecules so that it will act on beta 1 receptors but because the beta 1 and beta 2 receptors they are much similar as far as the amino acid sequence is concerned so the drug is going and binding to the beta 2 receptors as well so the beta 2 receptors wherever they are present say for example uh, in your uh, bronchioles or uh, beta 2 receptors are present in uterus beta 2 receptors are present beta 1 is present mainly in heart so i want the activity in heart but along with heart i will get the activity in the bronchi as well as the uterus so that is something which is undesirable so my molecule can have certain undesirable characteristic because of the off target binding as well as it could have high toxicity because of this reason then uh, other biological activities because of off target binding it could have certain difficulties as far as the absorption is concerned because here mainly it is the polarity of the compound which will dictate the absorption of the compound uh, whether it is lipophilic or hydrophilic because you know for passing through the membrane the molecule should be lipophilic enough okay and to dissolve in the intracellular uh, portion or the cytoplasm the molecule should be able to be hydrophilic then only it is going to dissolve okay so both this mix of character the hydrophilic and lipophilic balance should be there as far as the drug molecule is concerned as well as the lead molecule can have the metabolism problems as well okay because of the certain groups that are present which are more prone to metabolism than others so this could also be one of the problem so then what you do you take the lead compound and you modify it in such a way that you are increasing the desired activity or you are amplifying the desired activity as well as you are trying to minimize or eliminate the unwanted properties so when you do that you will arrive at a point where you will get a drug candidate okay now this drug candidate is a molecule which is nothing but a compound that is worthy of the extensive studies related to the biology and pharmacology okay and then whatever molecule will get after these biological and pharmacological studies that would be called as a clinical candidate or a clinical drug and then the compound is ready for the clinical trials initially the biological and pharmacological studies would be carried out in animals so that are for your pre clinical studies while later on the molecule or the clinical drug or drug uh, clinical candidate that molecule would be undergoing the clinical trials phase 1 phase 2 and phase 3 and then further the development process will occur drug development process will occur any doubts in this part yes is it clear then yes ma'am okay so this is just a cartoon or you can say or just a pictorial representation you can see there is a heap of this hay or whatever it is heap of hay and the person is coming out and he is saying found it what is the other person saying congratulations it only took you 65298 seconds 
so you can just imagine what amount of time it is required for the drugs to be discovered and developed so it's a time consuming process it's a, a money consuming process as well you need a lot of patience as far as the drug discovery and development is concerned this is another representation which is given in the same book richard b silverman which is your reference book for the topics which i would be covering so 